Welcome back to another video, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Today it is one of the most asked questions we get all the time. Which watches should you be looking to buy if you're looking to make a profit? And also wants to stay away from this winter if you're not wanting to take a loss. So last time we did this, we had a lot of comments, a lot of people saying, you know, you should buy for the love of watches. Just to make sure you're all aware, this video is solely for those who are looking to make a profit. We always say you should just buy whatever watch you want to buy and enjoy it. But this is for those looking to make a profit and looking to avoid taking a loss. So on this side, we have watches that we would say stay away from. And on this side, we've got watches that we would say you're looking to make a bit of profit. Now, of course, we're only talking about watches that we have in stock. There are also plenty of other amazing watches that you can buy from Rolex and other brands uh, where you can make a profit. But we're just talking about ones that we have in stock today. So. Let's start with ones to stay away from, Bobby. Yeah, so not necessarily stay away from, but you're not going to make a profit on them if you were to sell them directly to us, if you were to walk out the DAD. So there's a, there's a theme here. It's not just because we've got them in stock, but anything bi-metal in Rolex at the minute, because it's bi-metal and you've got rose gold or gold included in it, the price jumps up significantly at list price. Bi-metal root beer, bi-metal blue kit, bluesy, and bi-metal sub as well. You've got the blue kit and the black kit. The black kit, typically harder to sell from a green market point of view, which means we're going to be buying it for less. The blue kit, more popular, more desirable, but still, because it's bi metal, because of that list price and those jumps in price last year, the two price rises, it really is becoming a bit of a stretch to buy it at list and make a profit. Probably more surprising to me, because I love this watch, the bi metal root bit, is this one. So list price is 14750 for me to buy a brand new 2024 at the minute, I'm probably paying around about 14, so you are gonna take a loss. Now on a watch like this that was doing so well in previous years, that one for me is kind of the hardest one to stomach. All these watches, you're gonna be taking a loss on, but if you love them, buy them. But as always, what we say is if you're buying it to keep it, buy it, love it, get your spend up. James Cameron, so a full steel watch, but because it's a James Cameron with that dial, I think the list price is around about 12 and a half grand. Uh, you're gonna take a significant loss on this one as well. Um, this is the one free reference, uh, the brand new 2024. Uh, you will take a loss on that. So all these four watches, if you're looking to make a profit, these aren't the watches to go for. Before we jump onto this side, one thing I would say is this is only for people who are looking to make a quick profit, isn't it? I think long term, if you're going to hold onto the watch, wear it for a long period of time. Yeah, we're, to, we're, yeah we're talking about walking straight out of the AD, straight into us to make a profit on the same day. The days of investments have, have, have gone on your run of the mill. Rolexes. So the one that stands out to me is the celebration, only because of what it is and because of the list price. So the list price on this one is five and a half grand for the, OP, the OP41 celebration. Out of all these pieces, there's probably more profit in this one than any of them, just because of what it is and the desirable dial. The prices have come down a lot. Grey market, I mean, this one has probably halved, come down by about 50%. So any of these investment pieces, I'd probably say the celebration, just for, just for long term, stick it away, forget about it. It could be, end up being one of those pieces in years to come. And then after that, I'd probably say the Pepsi on the Jubilee is always a good banker. Stick it away, especially if you buy right. If you were buying it from the AD, obviously, then there's, there's much more room in it for profit down the line and from an investment point of view. In front of us, I'd probably say the Celebration was the standout investment piece. These were quite popular, weren't they, towards the back end of last year? Um, they still are now. Were people thinking they were going to get discontinued? Yeah, we definitely saw a surge in demand for the Pepsi last year. But then the best thing was, it, after the discontinuation wasn't announced, then it, it, it came back out into production again and we started seeing more coming out the conveyor belt. The price held nicely. Mm -hmm. um, so for anyone holding a Pepsi at that point, well done. We've seen more new Pepsis coming out of the AD than we did last year. Um, we've had a number of 24s in so far this year and they've gone out as fast as they've come in. So I think production has carried on again with Rolex on the Pepsi. Maybe that was a bit of um, a better cloak and dagger stuff by Rolex, stall in production just to get that demand going again, which wouldn't surprise me. I think you're right, because when we went to Watches and Wonders, a lot of their marketing on their, like, not stall, but you know, where they're showcasing the watches it was, was Pepsi, all blue Pepsi, and red. Yeah, blue yeah. and red. Yeah. Like, even the bezel at the other top was all blue and red. So maybe you're right that they did create that little bit of hype last year. Yeah. In the anticipation of people buying in 24. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the demand's still there for the Pepsis. And like I say, grey market price on the 2024 Jubilee now is anything from 17, 17 and a half thousand pounds. If Rolex said to you, look, you can have any watch within reason without off catalog or stupid pieces, and you were thinking, right, I'm going to get that and sell it to the grey market, what watch would stand out to you as the one to make the most profit on at the minute? Within reason. So we're not yeah. talking Le Mans. <laughs> no, obviously, um, just, you know, regular stuff that you can get out of there quite easy if you've got a decent spend yeah, already. Okay. So I'd probably say any kind of white gold or rose gold Daytona Roosterflex. Uh, just like a rose black dial or the, or the ghost, 
or the reverse ghost, probably the ghost more desirable than the reverse ghost. Any of the new release day dates from last year, pretty much, they, they, we've obviously we've seen the um, the grey ombre come into the market now, we saw our first one a couple of weeks ago. Anything like that, I'd say you, you, you're pretty good on. What about the other way? What about something that they might try and convince you to buy to get your spend up, but you're really going to take a huge hit on? Yeah, any kind of like full yellow gold piece. Full yellow gold um, Skydweller, as an example. Mm. I'd stay away from buy metal date justs. I think the list price on them now is, is like ridiculous yeah, in comparison yeah. to like sports models. I think we've spoke about in the past, yeah, but that's probably what I'd be staying away from. Obviously, people watching are probably thinking, oh, you're only talking about Rolex, but the reason we're talking about Rolex is because they're probably the most popular for trying to make a profit on. Patek and AP are a lot harder to get into yep. in terms of getting things out of them and, and making a profit. Tudor, Amiga, that kind of stuff either sells for a round list or maybe a bit below most things. Mostly below, but yeah. So would you definitely say Rolex are? Amiga are quite, like, I mean, Jay knows more about <coughs> Amiga than I do. A lot of the Amiga pieces will come out brand new and they're already at a massive markdown, but they're desirable, so I don't I don't understand that about Amiga. It's just a strange one. They make some lovely watches. Rolex probably account for 70, 75% of our total sales. Yeah. So that's why it's all Rolex in front of you now. One watch I will ask you on actually, uh, not something that's in front of us, but someone asked me the other day, the Titanium Yachtmasters. Yeah, so they've really come down, the Titanium Yachtmasters. At one point, there, was, there wasn't many coming out from the 80s, which was keeping the price really quite high. I think they were talking 28s, mm. 29s. Remarkably less now. So if you've been holding on to them thinking they're an investment piece, maybe they are, but not for a long time, I don't think. That's probably a sleeper watch. Yeah. Lovely watch is what it's, it's really nice in my opinion. I'd love it in a 40 mil as opposed to the 42 mil. Uh, but yeah, if you if you held on to one of those, the prices will come right down. I'd say as well, a few things for that watch. One, it's a Yachtmaster, which are great watches, but are never necessarily the quickest sellers, the most popular watches that we have. Two, it's very light. Obviously it's titanium and it's also got that like matted bezel. So it is a very different watch. Very it? niche yeah. Uh, watch, yeah. The Yachtmaster range itself, the Yachtmaster Rhodium, the Yachtmaster 40 Rhodium has always done well. It's always been an up and down watch. The Yachtmaster 40 Rhodium Oyster Flex, I've said numerous times, is in my top three watches of all time. But again, it has its ups and it has its downs. Obviously, we're saying stay away from these and we're looking at these. In terms of like what you've got to outlay for, for your profit, it's definitely the celebration, isn't it? There's, There's more bang for buck yeah. and the celebration than anything there, I think. I don't get it myself. I don't, I don't like the watch. I don't get the white desirable because it's a bit cartoony, it's a bit gimmicky for me. The market speaks and when people buy them and they hold the price like that, then then that's what they sell for. It's, it's that, that simple. Same reason why Pepsi go for 17, 17 and a half thousand pound and the Batman goes for, what, three, four grand less? It's just because that's what people like. I assume the thing is people think there's less of them around, mm. which there probably is. So they think that it's a banker. Uh, same with the Tiffany. Yeah. Obviously it's discontinued now but they still command a much higher price than list price. So obviously we're going into what the last quarter of the year, October, November, December. We've seen, I think 24 has definitely been a better year than 23, much better than 2022. We're on that steady trajectory. Like people keep saying, watch prices are coming down. They are, but the volume's still there. So that the market for watches is still there. So from a sales perspective, I'm talking about Kieran and Jay doing sales. I'm expecting the next three months to kind of be bigger than the last three months. January is always a great month for us as a business. We always seem to have a lull going into December and then all of a sudden it, it, it bangs and it takes off again. Now we've got Dubai as well, that's helping us a lot. So from, from our standpoint, the market is going the right direction. Everyone says all the time, oh, the market's dead, the market's dead because the prices have come down. People don't realise that that really benefits us. Like we don't want the yeah. watch prices to be high, like the profit margin is still exactly the same. We would much rather the watches be a lot more attainable and lower priced so more people are buying. So right now it's definitely a buyer's market. Like we keep saying on videos, we've had so many people chopping in like sports models, date just, you know, Tudors, Amigas, all these other things that they've had in the past. Yeah, yeah. there's all types of people buying at the moment. Part, big part X deals going, people upgrading. A lot of people downgrading. I think Jay had a sale over there where someone was downgrading from a, a blue sky into a, a date just 36. So there's all different types of deals happening but we're in it. as long as we're buying and selling we're making money and we're, and we're going in the right direction so yeah market's fine that closes another video guys thank you very much for watching hopefully we've answered some questions that we've been getting in the dms and in the comments recently if you're watching this video and you're looking to buy a watch or you've been offered one from rolex or you're just after a bit of advice 
drop us a message on the comments, leave the comments down below. Um, whatever that question might be, uh, one of our team will come back to you and answer it. And ask us questions that you want us to answer in the future. Anything that you might be needing to know, uh, even a watch that you've got sat in your safe and you're wondering if you've made a profit on it or not, or is it a good time to sell? Ask us in the comments, one of us will come back to you. Same as always, make sure you like, comment and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.